Hello again, welcome to another kit build and I have been looking forward to this kit build for some time now. This is um, a laser organ, a laser player. We'll see what it does in a minute. It involves a laser or a few lasers. Uh, inside the bag we've got uh, an instruction set and <coughs> very helpfully it's uh, all in Chinese uh, but it does give us uh, a schematic as to how it works um, but the Chinese uh, I'm not going to bother with that uh, it does give me the number of uh, components there on here which might come in handy later on so what have we got We've got some lasers by the looks of things here. Just zoom in a bit so you can see. There we go. There's some lasers there. Um, we've got some resistors here. This is our circuit board. Uh, so all the components are uh, screen printed on the circuit board for us there. That's quite handy. So it's a dual sided board. We've also got these as well. Now what these do um, is they sort of solder on or they clip onto the board like so. And then, so once that's in place like that, you've got this board here with the holes in it. And that will go over the top like that with the other one this side and what will happen is um, as um, your finger breaks the laser beam because uh, it will be pointing to these um, photosensitive um, components here uh, as you break the beam it will play the, the uh, note and I believe if I remember rightly, there's some built-in tunes as well that we could listen to. I'm sure it'd be lovely high quality as normal. Uh, what else have we got? Um, power cable. This is the main IC with something stuck inside it. There we go. So we've got an IC there and we've got the IC holder as well, which is handy. Uh, we've got some LEDs that we put on um, so the LEDs go on here and I believe there's some yeah, different coloured ones here because there's like a, a high medium and low as far as I know sort of uh, different octaves is it called I'm not a musical person so what do I know these tubing uh, will go over the light sensors like so so when it's on the board, the beam of light will just hit that and that'll just help with that. Um, we've got a few capacitors. Uh, or the glue, uh, this is a glue stick. Um, you're supposed to, I believe, glue the laser onto there. But I've done a bit of research about this and there's, there's a few people who built these in the past and they reckon soldering it is actually better than gluing it. So we'll have a look at that later on as well. So there we go. Let's just break all this down uh, into piles um, and then uh, we can start the actual build. Right, so that's got it into piles now. So there's our um, light sensitive components there. We've got the LEDs there two different colours, got a transistor in the middle, a USB connector there, got some capacitors here, crystal there, circuit board there, got two types of resistors there. So I think we're ready now to actually build it. So I think what we'll do is we need to look at these resistors first. Right, so let's see what we've got then. We've got um, 10k and we've got 1k resistors so just bring in our tester i've already taken the resistor off okay uh, so that'll be the 10k and just to double check 
and and yep that'll be the one cake right okay so now we've identified which is which just going to put in one one on that one and a 10 on that one so now which is which so what we got then uh one to our seven Let's bring my magnifying glass down a bit. So R1 goes across there, is the 1K, and got 8 to 14. Oh, so, yes, let me just zoom in a bit so you can see. So we've got 1K, which is R1 just there. And next to it, we've got the 10K just there. And that looks like it's repeated there. So there's a 1K, there's a 10K. Okay, so um, we'll pop those in first. And uh, I think we'll do the one case first. Yeah, so let's do the one case first. We'll do that one, that one, and that one. Right. Right, so I've got it mounted now, so let's put uh, a couple of these 1Ks in. So, first of all... We're just bending the legs at the back out a bit so they don't fall, fall out. And we'll just do the rest now. Right, that's nearly got all the resistor done. There's actually a 1K resistor just down the side here uh, where the clamp is. So what I'll do is I'll solder those up top first, then we'll pop that. There's actually two there. There's actually three there. Look, 1K, 1K, 1K is actually three. So there's those three to do as well, which we'll do those in a minute. First of all, let's get these soldered up first. Right, that's got them done. Let's just uh, flick this board over <coughs> and we can quickly do those other three. So we've got three just down here, which are one case. Right, that's got all those resistors done, so let us pop the board back the other way. Like that, tighten it up. Okay, so the next resistors then that we've got to do are the 10K ones, which... Um, uh, again, across the top there, so I won't uh, record that because you can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, so I'll just pause the video and I'll come back to you in a minute. Right, that's got all the 10k resistors done across there as well. There is one extra 10k which is down there, so we'll do that as well. But while we're down here, we've got a couple of capacitors. Now there will be these capacitors here. Uh, these are quite small. They're not um, marked plus or ground, so they can just go straight in as they are. And I'll show you the difference in a minute, so I'll get those two in. Okay, that's got them two in, and we want the extra 10k resistor in as well, so let's quickly do that while we're here. So that can go into place just there. Okay, and while we're here, there's another resistor, R15, 
Oh, that's also a 10k. Okay, just spotted where it says it. So let's get another 10k as well. The uh, markings on there are quite tight, so but that's okay. We've got it sorted out. Right, so let's get those done then, shall we? Let's get those four components soldered into place. Right, we're getting there and slowly, aren't we? <coughs> so that's the capacitors done, resistors done. Now there's another couple of components here. We've got the um, transistor to go on and we've also got another capacitor. Now you'll see on this capacitor, it is actually marked so we've got a hashed area, uh, so that indicates the ground, which is on the capacitor itself as a, a grey band that's marked on it. If you can see that just there. So that's the negative, which will go against the hash on the board. So let's get that in now. The longer lead is a positive as well. So we'll pop that in place and slightly bend that over as indicated on there bend the leg so it holds it in place so it's going to do one leg on here at the moment like that and I'm just going to hold the capacitor in place warm up that solder again let that set so that just holds it against the board. Now I can solder the other leg in place. Right, so that's got that done. And uh, next thing we'll do is the transistor. Uh, now the transistor has got a a flat edge and a rounded edge. You can see that there's a flat edge and there's a rounded edge. And if you look on the board, we've got a flat here and a round there. So that's how it goes on. Now the only problem is normally when you solder these in place is the legs tend to be quite close together. And again on these they are as well by looks things. So let's make sure our tip's nice and clean. Right, so that's got them done. Just double checking to make sure I haven't got a solder bridge. No, that looks okay to me. So we chop those off. So the next thing we can do is the crystal that goes in here. Again, this doesn't matter which way around it goes. This is the crystal. So let's pop that on the board. Like so. Can just bend the legs out slightly to hold it in place and then we can solder that up. Okay, right, fantastic. So what we've got left now, we've got some sockets here, we've got some switches to do here and we've got the IC hold as well. So tell you what, let's, um, let's do this um, speaker first, shall we? So on the speaker, ah, yes, here it is. So on the speaker, you should be able to see a, a plus just there, look, on the casing. And that's going to go against a plus on the board just there. So let's put that in place. Right, so that's a crystal in place, capacitors, resistors in place. Uh, I think the next thing we'll do then is the two switches that go either side. Now they are uh, these little switches, like so. So let's just pop. Well, I'll tell you before we do that, let's just slide this down a bit. Uh, let's come loose and tie that up. Right, now we can get to that a bit better. That one's a little bit on the loose side. I'm going to just pull the legs out very gently, very slightly on the sides there. Pop that in again. 
There we go, that's a bit tighter. Just done that just so it holds it in place as we solder it up, that's all. <clears throat> There we go, that's two done. Oh, <laughs> so our switch has moved. Right, let's see if we can sort that out. So I'm just going to push with the one side of the circuit board and just warm that solder up and see if I can just push it through a bit. Here we go. Well, that was. Uh, yeah, I just dropped the solder on the floor. Uh, right. Okay. What should have been an easy job was a bit more complicated, but there we go. I've got the two buttons done now. Right. I'm just going to clear the bench a little bit. Push that to one side and bring in this. So, this is the. IC holder and IC. Let's just get rid of that tape so that legs don't seem to be too bad. Don't look as if they've got damage in the post. So let's have a look. So on here, then we've got a cutout there and a cutout on there. So that needs to match up. So Yep, that's popped on quite nicely. Right, so <clears throat> what we do now is just going to hold, dab a bit of solder on this leg just here, and we're going to let go and watch the socket fall out. Oh great, okay, so desoldering pump again. Right, as I was saying, the cutout goes to the cutout. And this time we'll do it properly. A dab of solder on that leg. And a dab of solder on that leg. And the reason why we do opposites is we can make sure that the IC is the IC socket is down. There is a bit of movement on there if you can see that. So let's all we'd have to do is just to heat up that one leg, and push it against the board, heat up this leg, and we're pushing against the other side as well, like that. Yep, that's better. That's now it's all got to do now is solder all those legs up. Right, that's got all those done. The um, next thing we need to do is the diodes that's going to go across here and across here. But before we do the diodes, let's just check them. So I have my diode tester here. Zoom out a bit so you can see what's going on. And first of all, we'll do the coloured ones. I'm presuming these are red or green or something, don't ask me, I'm colour blind. Oops, wrong way around. Yep, there we go. Sometimes you just have to hold it to one side so it makes contact. Okay, so these Next ones, oh, nice bright blue. Yes, I can see blue. 
falei eu acho que Although I was asked the other day whether colour blindness was real and I was just making it up. But I can assure you colour blindness is real and I wasn't making it up. So I was asked how do I get on at traffic lights? Well the two questions I get asked is one how do you get on at traffic lights? And the other question is, do you only see in black and white? Well, I don't see in black and white. I do see colours, but I sometimes get the colours wrong, particularly when it's shades. That's the, my worst thing, when you see shades of things. And the second thing about traffic lights is that the red means go <coughs> and the green means stop. Right, OK, so let's get the LEDs in. So we'll do the three first of all that goes down the side here um, and the LEDs have a long leg and a short leg and the long leg is the positive and the short leg is the ground and on the circuit board we have a plus next to a square connection and we have a round connection with a little line against it so the plus is the square which is the long leg so we'll pop that in there and look Right, I'll get them soldered in place and I'll also solder the ones that go across the top here again. Just the same, you've got long leg and short leg. Long leg is a positive, square on the board is a positive. Pop those in there and we just put the legs out and off we go. Right, so I'll solder those up and come back to you in a minute. So far, so good. So what's left now? Well, are these light sensitive things here. Now these are actually resistors. Um, and what happens with these is when the light comes on, or the, the, the laser comes on and shines against this, the resistance changes and that's how they're able to um, detect a change. Um, there's no plus or minus on these. So we can just slot these straight into place, which should go up here. Now I do need to leave them a little bit pronounced from the board. Um, if you can see that, um, twist it around so you can see. Now you can see that's a little bit pronounced from the board. So we've got to put those sleeves over them. Um, <clears throat> there's those black sleeves later on. So yeah that's about right so as you can see although these are soldered in place i can still wiggle them around to get them straight so let's just chop the legs off those okay so i'm just going to do exactly the same thing now on all the rest of them over the top Right, that's got all those on now. Um, they are a bit wibbledy wobbledy, but that's okay because it'll give us um, some wiggle room when we put the tubing on later on. So that's got them done. <clears throat> so the only thing we've got left now is a power connection just here, which is a USB. So let's change the circuit board round. Oh, well, I can undo it. Grippity grip on that. Tighten it up. Right, what have we got here then? So we've got a USB which goes on like so. It just pops on there like that. And this is going to be fun, isn't it? Right. Let's get our solder ready. Try and do this quickly so I don't bear my thumb that's holding it in place. Right, let's got them in done. So let's get the bigger ones in. These are just to hold the case. There we go. 
Right, so that's the USB in place, that's good. Uh, what else have I got? Uh, oh yes, we've also got this um, power as well, so if you don't want to use a USB, we can use this instead. Again, this is uh, quite thick pads, so let's get uh, let's hold that in place. Thumbs underneath, but the look at this is plastic this time, so shouldn't be as bad. Right. <clears throat> okay, I think that is actually all the components done now. Let's have a look. So all the resistors, the light resistors there, the normal resistors, the diodes are done, the power is done, the switches are done. These are just connections if you want to uh, reprogram the chip, which we're not going to do, so I'm going to leave them off. So yeah, I think that's everything that I'm not going to put the chip on yet. Uh, what we need to do now is to look at the LEDs. Not the LEDs. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at the lasers. That's what I was going to say. Laser time. Just before we get on to the next bit, let's just put on the IC uh, because I think we can actually switch this on because there's some built-in tunes. Uh, so a quick look at the legs. The legs look okay, don't look too damaged. Yep. They look okay, so we've got a cutout here. Don't forget that lines up with the cutout on the board there itself. <clears throat> so let's see if we can get that in. Or, yeah, just as I thought, the legs will need bending slightly. So let's pop it on the bench like that, and then just give it a little roll on the bench so all the pins get moved at the same time. Just double check to make sure you've got the cut out at the right end and should be able to put that in. No, we've got a bent pin. Right, that comes along those pliers. So if you see this end, look, this pin on the end here has got slightly bent. So let's bend that back, Just straighten all these up slightly, way out of the way. It's got one side in and that's got the other side in. Right, I'm just double checking to make sure all the pins are in, which by the looks of things they are. Okay, right. <coughs> Get our power brick. Okay. Ah, right, okay, so it's on that at the moment. So if we go. Because I'm covering both the lenses, right? That's one. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's the automatic. I think this LED at the end here is not working. So these LEDs are working down here on the right, but I don't think this LED here is working for some reason. Okay, that's enough of that. So we're just going to investigate this LED at the end here because that was not working, but it looks like the actual circuit board is working okay. <clears throat> 
So let's uh, now look at the other bit. Let's put that to one side. Which are these here? Right, just looking around, we have got some spare LEDs, so perhaps we can have a look at that later. Right, so let's have a look at these. So this has got to go in. I'm not too sure which way around it goes. Um, oh, I see. Okay, so um, we pop that in like that. And then the we've got a minus or a ground rail. And then we have a plus rail as well. So that will go on something like that. And then we have this in place underneath there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on the vise. Let's see if I can hold that in, probably with a bit of blue tack or something, and then solder it in place. What uh, one of the guys on the on YouTube said was um, just solder one side for the time being until we make sure that everything lines up and then you can solder both sides. It's supposed to hot glue this in place, but one thing I worry about hot glue is that you won't be able to move it or even change it if it doesn't work. Because one thing we haven't done is t tested these. Right, okay, um, and then we've got to mount this to the board. So that goes on the corner like that. And then we've got that one to go on as well, like that. Right, so we've still got a bit of building to do, but uh, let's get the vise. Right, that's got the uh, circuit board on the vise. What I'm going to do is just give it a quick clean. There we go. And then one of these we can pop through there like that. It's the same printer circuit both sides, so there's no problems which side you actually use. Um, so I need to pop that through there. And then we need to hold it in place. So let's find a bit of blue tack, which is easier said than done. There it is. Hold it with a bit of blue tack like that. Right. And where's my solder gone? There's my solder. Right, let's see if that's taken to it. No, not in the slightest. Great start. Just popping the blue tack on again. I wonder if I can pop it a foot on the side there. Right, it's a foot on the side there. Stick it down. That looks better. Yeah, that's definitely stuck this time. Yep, yeah, I uh, see. So a bit of flux needed. Right, I'm going to do that with the rest of these now. So we just solder one side, and then we'll do the soldering the other side for the power. Back in a moment.
Right, that's got all those done. So we've just got two tracks here, the sides plus and minus. So the blue goes to minus, the red goes to plus. I suppose I could have cut this wire down a bit, but uh, it's alright like that. It'll look nice on the top. Looks like it's got hair. Uh, right, okay, so uh, they're not exactly in uh, level, but as long as they're pointing down straight, that's the main thing. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Um, I think it might be better to solder these on to here first. So the keyed. Right, so just push that on like so. And then it comes off in your hand. Right, do that again. So that's got to come on like that. We've got to try and get some solder down in that corner. Hmm. How are we going to do this? I think my friend the blue tack might come in handy for this. Something like that. Um, I've got to make sure this is straight. Looks a bit wonky on camera, but on the desk it looks fine. I have to excuse me, I need my magnifying glass for this. Okay, who spotted the mistake? Ow, oh, look what I've done. This supposed to be pointing down, not up. Uh, okay, here we go, just do it all over again. Right, let me desolder those, turn it round. Back in a minute. Okay, exactly the same process as before, but this time you make sure that the lasers are the right way around. I won't tell anybody if you don't. So we have a spare laser, that's okay. We've still got that LED to check out down there because that's not working. But what we can do now is pop on this black plastic which is to cover over those um, so the laser beam just hits this and nothing else so how much do we need I would guess about yay much so one two three four five six seven so that's one two Three, four, five, six, seven, a bit square. Right, so that should cover those and protect them a bit from the uh, desk lights as well actually. <laughs> so 
Some resistors are just a sign though, so I'm push these off. Maybe some of the resistors. Okay, the moment of truth, is it going to work? <clears throat> Turn the bench lights off. I don't see a laser light. It's supposed to be able to see a laser light going across there, so why can't I see a laser light? That's the automatic. Did that flash at the beginning then? No, it didn't. Okay. I think this one's supposed to switch it over to this light. But it doesn't look as if the lasers are working. For some reason, right, I need to investigate that. Right, <clears throat> I have found something out. So, uh, first of all, my USB brick was going to sleep because it wasn't pu pulling enough power. So that's one thing that's caused a problem. So I now plugged it into my bench power supply. So it now boots up okay. Still got that LED to sort out in the corner. And it works like that. So that's okay. But we've still got no, uh, no lasers at the top. Now, the... Um, boards at the side, you can't get them wrong. There's just two um, tracks going up from the motherboard. However, if we bring our multimeter in and we check what its power is, it's showing 5.3 volts, if you can see that, all right? Point three volts. The problem is that this side is the plus, and if you look, it's going to the blue cables, so it's the wrong way around. I find that a bit odd because it, you can't really get this wrong. It's it's it's. What I'm saying is, you've got two tracks going up and two tracks going across. You know, um, unless I've got to spin the board round, but is there any markings on the board? See, there's no real markings on the board to tell you which way round it goes. But that's the problem by the looks of things. I've got the plus and the minus the wrong way around. So, I think the easiest thing to do is to desolder the corners, turn it round and then try again. So let's do that now. Welcome back. <clears throat> it's a few days later and I have to tell you this has been uh, a learning experience. Let, let's put it that way. Uh, the problem with this board it was it was upside down. Simple as that. I just got it the, the, this, this top board the wrong way around. Once I realised that and flipped it over I was able to uh, resolder these uh, lasers back on the top again. You'll notice that I've left the wires connected un underneath just to save a bit of time. Uh, but that was a problem with that. It wasn't the side ones that were wrong. It was actually the top board that was wrong. Um, which is a shame really. They should have really marked it just to which, which way around to go. Um, so I just put the light on. So the positive um, is on the on this side on the front side if you like and the ground is on the back of it this side so if you're building one of these make sure you get it the right way around light gone off 
Uh, other things to note, um, it takes an absolute age to get these lasers lined up. Um, I'm glad I only soldered them one side um, and then very carefully um, you have to just uh, touch the soldering iron on the solder and then wiggle the laser to get it actually lined up and if you look at it now I'm going to switch it on you will see that all the lasers are now lined up but believe me it takes a long time to get that done I've now sold both sides so hopefully they won't move does it work? well sort of yes that one stopped working that one was working but it's now stopped this one works occasionally when it feels like it that one that one that one the end one the led is not working see, oh well see that third one's now <laughs> works occasionally Well, so there you go. So um, this button here on the right hand side, it changes what I think it's called the octave, is it? Uh, or whereabouts the... There we go. Um, and this button on the left hand side plays the tune. There we go. So yeah, it works. Um, it works to a point, let's put it that way. Um, I'm just putting these on and you see how these are going to be absolutely sp spot on with the lasers. See, that one's working now. Uh, See, even that one's not perfect. We're just supposed to glue these down as well. I don't know. Awkward these, aren't they? I wonder if it's because these are a bit uh, at an angle. Okay, so we've got those done. I think I have to fiddle about a bit with them. Well, there you go. It works, which is great. Um, I'm going to fiddle about with these plastic covers now because it seems that uh, the better they are, the more chance you have of it actually working. So you've got a laser across the top, uh, light receivers at the bottom, LEDs and different tunes. I will not um, um, say that I can play anything because I can't. Um, and the only thing to investigate is why that LED is working, not working. Hope you've enjoyed that. Please give it a thumbs thumbs up if you do. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.